What's up you guys and welcome to another episode of the Variety Views. I'm your host, Variety Vendor, and I'm here to rebook the invasion angle. Um, this is one of the the most rebooked talked about angle in all of wrestling. Everybody just keeps on talking about it. What would they have done differently? Or what they could have done if they had infinite power. But you see, as much as it would be interesting to buy out all the contracts and get all the big names, you get Goldberg, you get Hogan, you get Sting, you get the Outsiders, you get, you know, all these big names. But at the same time, what are you really doing? What are you really doing? You already have a bloated roster as it is. A huge roster. A lot of guys that you got to think about at the same time. So if you bring in all these guys, guess what you're doing? You're killing your business. You're killing your roster. Guys get left out and get lost in the shuffle because Hogan wants more airtime. Because Goldberg wants... Uh, wants to squash um, an up-and-coming talent in, in in like a Jericho or, or Eddie Guerrero or a Perry Saturn or even a Benoit, you know? So what are you really doing? If you do that, then guess what? You're turning into WCW. You're bringing your product down. And what is that going to do for you? Oh, you're going to get a lot of money out of it? Really? Is that really what's going to happen? Because if that happens, if that really was the case, then WCW wouldn't have went out of business. Then it's last year in the company. It's so embarrassing. It was so embarrassing. When you had Flair in the ring talking about how great WCW is in a half-empty building, they would dark they, they would have curtains they would have black curtains around and it just it, it it looked bad you thought smackdown was bad like a year ago or or even raw wcw was even worse a third of the audience was there a third of the crowd was was there you know like the th a third of the of the seatings in those arenas were filled so, what are you really doing? WCW was dead. It was dead. Instead, I'm taking a different approach. All I'm doing is getting two guys. I want two guys. Two important guys. And one of them was under WCW contract and the other one wasn't. He was a free agent. He left in 99. Or actually got fired in 99. So... Really, I'm just getting one guy. And you know what? With that one guy and the other free agent, guess what I'm doing? I'm making a lot of money because I'm not overbloating my roster. I'm getting two guys, two smart guys, two business, business savvy guys, and they will do what's best for business. As long as you pay them, they'll do it. That's all it takes. They might have an ego, sure, who doesn't, but not as much as a Hogan or even a Sting or, or a Goldberg at that time. So I'm getting these two guys. And here's what I'm doing. Let's get let, let's let's go back in time. Back to WrestleMania 17. Let me set the stage for you. This was the most successful WrestleMania of all time. And I'm not talking just about I'm not talking about buy rates, okay? Buy rates you can you can you can talk about the ones in the 80s, you know, with inflation, you got, you know, WrestleMania 23, so it's like you don't really know. You don't really know. It's hard it's hard to say, but WrestleMania 17 is regarded as being the greatest WrestleMania of all time. And for years I kind of agreed with it, but then, like, the more I would watch it, I'd be like, meh, it's, it's good, it's really good. There are a lot of amazing moments, a lot of moments that will, 
stand the test of time. To this day, they would, they're, they're still talking about it. A lot of the moments that happen on that show are still talked about to this day. And it, it is a great show. It's a great show. It's a great WrestleMania. It's an awesome WrestleMania. But at the same time, it was kind of overshadowed. Now, to its credit, it was so good that it was able to overcome the stuff around it. Because a week prior to that, there was an announcement. One week, six days before that show, before WrestleMania 17, there was an announcement that shook the wrestling world. And that was Vince McMahon bought WCW. And it was, I, I remember watching that show and it was so underwhelming. So underwhelming. At the end, you know, I was happy seeing Rock and Austin and, and the Hardy Boys and the Dudleys and Edge and Christian. Just stealing the show, the, that Shane versus Vince match, great match, great storytelling, all around, great show. In a bubble, it's a great show, but I'm 10 years old, and I'm watching this show, and all I can think is WCW. And by the end, or actually before that, before the, the Vince and Shane match... Shane goes like, hey, look at, you know, the, right there, you know, shout out to my buddies, my WCW boys. And it's Sean Stasiak and Chavo Guerrero and Mike, Mike Sanders. Really? Of all the names? And I remember being so disappointed. So here's what I would do. I would do something just a little bit different because here's another thing. Here's another thing. It's hard to do an invasion angle when you've got a lot of guys that are over with the fans, that fans love and, and just absolutely adore, like a DDP, like a Booker T, and have them be the heels against Vince McMahon, the guy who has pretty much been the, the most misogynist prick billionaire um, for for a year before you know the whole thing before WrestleMania 17, and I, I'm supposed to root for Vince? Is that what I'm supposed to do? It, it it's difficult. It's difficult to do that. It's difficult to do that when it's it's Vince. It's freaking Vince. How is he a babyface? It's I I can't. I can't really. It, it, you gotta you gotta work around it a little bit, where Vince doesn't really isn't really in the um, in the whole scheme of things, and he's pretty much just. I would turn him. Here's here's how it, I would turn Vince in this storyline, this entire storyline. He would pretty much be like, guys, just do whatever you want. Just make me money basically just go out there and make me money i don't care it's like no vince they're they're, they're threatening us they're 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 they want to kill this business like not really i'm i'm looking at the chart and we're making a lot of money so i cannot i can't fire them for that so it's now up to shane mcmahon shane mcmahon is the one is the voice of reason and he's trying to work that out. Stephanie, she's she's still like by Triple H's side, and Triple H is like he's so he wants the championship, he wants the WWE title, and he will do whatever it takes to get it. But at the same time, there's a roadblock. There's somebody that just won't go away, and that's Chris Jericho. And you do Jericho and Triple H. Jericho and Triple H are feuding for a little bit. And the Intercontinental title isn't on the line. I give that to Benoit. Let Benoit have great matches with Eddie Guerrero. And you have Jericho and Triple H just continue their feud. Resume their feud from 2000 and just go nuts. Just just have, have a great series of matches. Now, here's what I would do with Austin. Go back to WrestleMania 17. And I know I'm just I'm going all over the place right now, but hang with me. WrestleMania 17. Here's what I. Here's what I'm pitching. Okay. Here's here's my idea. 
of what should have happened, okay? Austin going into WrestleMania is pretty much saying, like, I will do whatever it takes. I will do whatever it takes to win that championship because nothing in the world means more to me than that title because that proves that I am indeed the best. And I have to beat you, Rock. I have to. Because without that, then I pretty much cease to exist. I have to beat you to prove that I am indeed the best in the world. With all due respect. I love that, that sit-down interview. So, we go into WrestleMania 17. We got Rock, we got Austin, and they are just colliding. Take Vince out of the equation. Vince is nowhere in this match. But, got something different. I got something different. And that is, by the end, by the very end, both guys are bloodied, they're barely able to stand, and they're just grabbing each other's shoulders, trying to, you know, pick themselves up by using the other person. And that's where it happens. It's a no-DQ match, right? It's a no-DQ match. And they're just going for just going for haymakers, trying as hard as they can. Rock gets the upper hand, hits the spine buster, about to, about to go for the people's elbow. The fans are erupting, and then Rock just stops. He wants to, he's, he, he wanted to, you know, remove his elbow pad, but then he looks into the crowd, and in the sea of just WWE fans, or WWF fans at the time, there's that one guy, one guy in the crowd, and it's Scott Hall. Scott Hall hasn't been on TV on national TV in two years, since 99. And he's there. And he's wearing that denim denim vest and jeans, just like he did when he debuted on WCW Nitro in 96. Wearing that denim jacket, and he does his pose. And Rock is like, just like looking at him, and that's when you get Nash come in from behind, attack Rock, hit the power bomb, and Austin goes for the cover. One, two, three. And that's your new champion, Stone Cold Steve Austin. And after after the match, Scott Hall gets into the ring. Those three guys. Celebrate with beers, and I know it wouldn't be good for Hall, but just for the sake of this, they celebrate, they toast, and raise each other's arms. As you see this this crowd, this giant crowd, just eating it up. Because, you know, I, I want to think, like, it's the NWO, they probably want to throw garbage in, but it's Austin. It's in, it's in his home state. So they're not really going to boo Austin. Despite everything that he did, they still would have cheered him. Next night on Raw, we have Rock just waiting, waiting for Austin to show up. Waiting for him in the parking lot, waiting for him... You know, uh, in the lobby, just, you know, going around the building and just, you know, waiting for him, waiting for Austin to come in. And he's pretty much telling everybody, like, hey, once Austin shows up, you let me know. You let me know. And they're like, okay. So he's he's waiting for them, gets blindsided by the NWO. Or, yeah, I guess you can call them the NWO, uh, the Outsiders in Austin. They attack. They attack Rock. They beat the crap out of him. And they throw him into a windshield. And that's how you write off the rock. That's how you, you know, get rid of the rock. And it's just, it's a devastating, it's just a, a crazy, crazy attack. And finally, you know, like a power bomb uh, into the windshield. Or they can just throw him into the windshield. And we just, like, there, there's a commotion and then the camera pans and you see the rock's head in, in the windshield. Of course, it's gimmicked. You don't see like the the impact, 
the camera just you know it, it gets thrown away you know like the the outsiders push push the camera guy so the camera falls and we see like you know feet just like you know freaking just going around and then like the outsiders put him through a windshield and then as the camera guy gets up you see you, you see the shot of rock's head into the windshield just like they did in uh, 99 with Shawn Michaels when the corporation just beat the crap out of Shawn Michaels. So that's what I would do with Rock. Um, uh, recycled, sure, but I, I think it would be a great moment. And what we do is we have the NWO in the ring. They cut a promo. Vince McMahon comes out and he says, you know, uh, last night was the greatest WrestleMania of all time. And I can't fault you for that, but I just want to ride the wave of that. I want to ride the wave of that the, the huge success that we were in by putting you guys in a match. Yeah, I'm going to have the Outsiders go up against Kane and The Undertaker tonight. And they're like, what, what the hell? So Vince is not really a heel. He's not full-blown babyface, but he's just he wants ratings. That's what he's all about. So he's just booking these matches, and he doesn't care. He doesn't care which side he's on. He just he just wants to have a show where it gets ratings. And it's not that far-fetched from the real-life Vince McMahon. So that's what I would do. And the, the main event, we got The Outsiders versus Undertaker and Kane. And basically, they come out, you know, during that promo... And Vince is saying, like, you know, hey, Outsiders, you're going to have your first match in many, many years on Raw. Uh, the first match, I believe, in, like, seven years on Raw. And you're going to be facing Undertaker again. The Outsiders are like, hey, whoa, whoa, and then, Like, you know, Austin's like, hey, come on, calm down, calm down. And he just, like, you know, whispers in their ears. And the Outsiders are like, hey, okay, fine. We'll have a match tonight. But under one condition. And <laughs> Vince is like, what are you talking about? Making... Uh, making conditions and, 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 and actually trying to negotiate with me? You forgot who you're dealing with? I own you. I own your contracts. What are you talking about? I get to book whatever I want. Outsiders like, no, we, 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 can, we can walk away if we want to right now. All we want is just one condition, one caveat. And Vince is like, oh, come on, what? And he's, they, they pretty much say, we want the tag team titles on the line. Because my idea is to have the tag titles on the Brothers of Destruction instead of Edge and Christian. I would have, okay, um, WrestleMania 17, I would have the Brothers of Destruction versus, um, versus Edge and Christian versus the Hardys versus the Dudleys in the TLC match. And they can do all the bumps while the Brothers of Destruction... They can deliver those those devastating moves instead of like jumping off ladders or crazy shit. So I think it would just be a a, a fun match instead of having the the weird run-ins with Rhino and Spike Dudley. I just think you know just contain it with these guys, and I think it would be so much more fun. And you can still have the great moments. I just think the the Brothers of Destruction they kind of were overshadowed by everybody else, and I and it works because. At No Way Out, they had a tables match with Edge and Christian and the Dudleys. So it kind of works going into WrestleMania and they do the tables, ladders, and chairs. And chains. They got chains. <laughs> so it just, it would be fun, I think. So the next night on Raw, and, and the, you know, Kane and, and Kane and Undertaker come out and they're right next to Vince and they're like, okay, we accept. We accept. We just want to kick ass tonight. And so the main event is the Outsiders versus the Brothers of Destruction, and I'm sure it would just it, it'll do a huge rating. And so we have this match, and what happens is there's distractions by Stone Cold, of course, and the Outsiders end up winning. They end up winning the tag titles. So Outsiders got the tag titles. Austin got the WWE Championship. They are pretty much unstoppable. Now. We go on to SmackDown. We go on to SmackDown, and Vince is like, you know, Raw did a huge rating. So SmackDown, you know what? We're going to have a six-man tag tonight. We're going to have 
Austin, and we got to have the Outsiders going up against the Brothers of Destruction and the Big Show. And so, you know, that's that's your main event for SmackDown. And what happens is Big Show turns on the Undertaker and Kane, and it makes sense because he was uh, once part of the NWO twice, <laughs> twice. Because he was once, uh, you know, he was in the original NWO, then he broke off, and then you had the Wolfpack and NWO Hollywood, and then he joined Hollywood, so, okay, you know, he would be part of the NWO now. Now you got a faction. Now you got a big faction, a, a strong faction. So, you lead into Backlash. Now you got Backlash coming on the horizon, and you got the Outsiders versus... Uh, versus the Brothers of Destruction for the tag titles inside a steel cage. That is your match. While um, in the main event uh, for the WWE Championship, you do a triple threat with Austin, Jericho, and Triple H. And, you know, it's a, you, you have Austin retain that match, of course. As far as the steel cage match goes, they... They have the match, and who helps the Outsiders win that match? Now, earlier in the match, you got Big Show um, winning the Hardcore Championship, uh, beating Raven and Rhino uh, and Taz, and you know it's just it's just a clusterfuck of a match. It's multiple man, uh, you know, multi man matches, uh, multi multi man match with like you know a bunch of dudes. And Big Show goes over. He wins the Hardcore title back. And, you know, he is just, you know, he he's barely standing. You know, he, his, his elbow is all fucked. So the Outsiders are pretty much on their own. And, um, you know, they're, they're backstage and Hall is like, you know, hey, Big Show is not answering his phone. Yeah, I just saw him go, um, you know, go get in the ambulance. And, and Hall is like, man, what? We're, we're, we're going to get our asses whooped by... By Kane and Undertaker, what are we gonna do? And Nash was like, "Hey man, calm down. We're we're the Outsiders. We're the greatest tag team of all time. What are you talking about? We can do this." And and Hall is like, "All right, all right, big man. Uh, you know, I I I put my faith in you. You know, for for a long time, and you never disappointed. So." Uh, I'm gonna continue to trust you because I I think you got you got something uh, up your sleeve, and Nash is like, I don't know what you're talking about, and so the tag uh, during the tag match. That's when I have X Pac help out the Outsiders, and he joins the NWO. Now you got six, or you know his name six not the sixth member because I'll keep it at you got Nash Hall five we'll keep it at five no no more no less just keep it at five all right maybe add one more but that's later on and the 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 sixth member is not really like you know full-time wrestler so we'll, we'll we'll get to that and now we get into SummerSlam and all this time Shane McMahon is pretty much telling Vince like man they're going to what are you doing? What are you doing? And and Vince is like, man, this is son, this is my th this is my company. And they're making me money. So, I'm not going to fire them. I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, you know, punish them for making me money. Are you kidding me? I'm enjoying this. So just sit down. Come on. Come on, Shane, sit down. Sit right next to me. Shane's like, okay. Shane's sitting right next to him. You know, to watch the main event of SummerSlam. And it's Austin versus the returning Rock. And leading up to the show, Rock has got the upper hand against all the NWO, NWO guys. Always finds a way to, to get out of dodge. Always finds a way to escape an attack from the NWO. Always getting um, uh, one up. On, on the NWO. So we get to SummerSlam. It's Rock Austin. And they're going to have their match. And 
you know, the the NWO members have all been uh, they, they have all been barred from ringside. Okay, they they have been taken out of the building, and that's because they lost their matches earlier in the night. And oh, right, uh, I, I completely forgot about this. Backlash, go back to Backlash, two thousand one, and what happens is during that cage match. Undertaker is taken out. They absolutely destroy his leg with with the steel door just multiple times right on his leg. And that's how you take out the Undertaker. Undertaker is taken out with a stretcher. They they put him in an ambulance. The ambulance goes off and then there's a monster truck that comes in and just destroys the ambulance. And later on in the night, they open up the ambulance and you see smoke. Undertaker is gone. You don't know where Undertaker went. And that's how you write off the Undertaker. No longer. That's it. He's done. And going into SummerSlam, that's when we have Kane versus Big Show. And if Kane wins, Big Show gets barred from ringside in the main event. And the Outsiders have a match against... Let's go with the Dudleys. Let's go with the Dudleys and a tables match. And if the Dudleys win... The Outsiders are barred from ringside. And also we got um, X-Pac having a match with RVD. RVD just joined the company. There's there's no mention of like, oh, there's there's an ECW invasion or anything like that. No. RVD just been signed. He's been winning matches. And he beats X-Pac for the Intercontinental Championship on SummerSlam. So... X-Pac is barred from ringside. And so the main event is Austin versus Rock. It's no holds barred. They get to do whatever the fuck they want. They go around the arena. They beat the crap out of each other. They put each other through announcer's tables. They throw each other into uh, Titan Trons. It's just crazy. It's, it's pandemonium. They get in the ring. And the ref is down. And Rock is about to deliver the finishing rock bottom. The rock bottom of all rock bottoms. He's just building up and building up. He's just like, get up, you son of a bitch. And the cameraman who's on the apron wallops him in the back of the head. Rock falls to the, uh, to, to the canvas. Austin is just... You know, he looks back and he's just, you know, he, he wipes off the blood out of his face and out of his eyes. And he looks at the cameraman. Cameraman reveals to be Eric Bischoff. Vince McMahon, and you look backstage and Vince McMahon's like, what the hell? And, and, and Shane is like, I told you, I told you, they, they want to take over this company. It's like Vince is like, you know, Bob, never. And it's like, you know, he's just, just beside himself. He's just going crazy. And and Eric Bischoff is just laughing. And Stone Cold laughs, you know, back to, to Eric Bischoff. Lifts up Rock. Hits the Stone Cold Stunner. One, two, three. And still, your WWF champion, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Eric Bischoff gets into the ring. And he hugs Austin. And they both celebrate with the championship. And that's how you go off the air of SummerSlam. While Vince and Shane are uh, on the entrance ramp. And they're just watching. His, his biggest rival holding up his, 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 his champion. Holding up the hand of his champion. The biggest money maker in, his, uh, in the entire business. Eric Bischoff and Austin join forces. Now that, I believe, more so than Vince and Austin. So, that's my idea. Little side note, okay? A little, uh, a couple of, a couple of ideas. We go into Survivor Series. Now Vince is like, okay, I want my company back. That's what I want. I want my company back. No longer... Do I want Eric Bischoff to run things? Because what happened was Stephanie 
was actually working with Eric Bischoff. And under the guidance and manipulation of Triple H, Triple H is the one pulling the strings the entire time. So we go on to Survivor Series. And this entire time, whenever we see Triple H, he's back home. He's rehabbing. And we see him via satellite. And it's like, it was me, Vince. It was me. I'm the one that got Eric Bischoff in. And Stephanie and I have been working on this for years. And that's why, hey, we're going to own this company. So we go into Survivor Series and it's WWF versus NWO. We got X-Pac. We got Big Show, we got The Outsiders, and we got Austin in one side, and we got the WWF. Now, if the WWF wins, those guys don't get fired. No. They must disband. And also on the card of Survivor Series, we got Eric Bischoff versus, versus Vince. But it's it, it doesn't go long, because Eric Bischoff is not a wrestler. He's not a good wrestler. Um, he can't do anything. He really can't. In the ring, no. Terrible. Um, so, you have... Oh. Oh. How about this? I got an idea. Rematch. WrestleMania 17. At Survivor Series. Shane McMahon joins forces with Eric Bischoff and now Vince has to face his son at Survivor Series and it I think I think it would be better now I wouldn't have Shane be against Vince like but I can't Vince against Eric Bischoff would just suck um, Shane versus Eric Bischoff sucked I've seen that match. It sucked. So Austin, until so Vince versus Shane, and you got Eric Bischoff at ringside. And if Vince Vince loses, he hands over the reins to Shane, um, Shane and Stephanie. Uh, but if he wins, if Vince wins, he gets five minutes with Eric Bischoff inside a steel cage. So that nobody interferes. Vince wins that. And beats Shane McMahon. So it's Vince versus Eric inside the steel cage. And you got Shane on the outside. Stephanie on the outside as well. Triple H is in a wheelchair. And Vince is just beating the crap out of Eric Bischoff. He's making him bleed. Rubbing his face against the fence. And that's how you have Vince go over. And he wins back his company. And WWF beats the NWO. So the NWO is no more. Next night on Raw. Vince. Vince vacates the WWF championship. That Austin has been holding hostage. We go into. And then we go into. Um. January of Raw. And basically, what we have is the return, or you know what, November, the night after Survivor Series, yes, because Charlotte, absolutely, the return of Ric Flair. And it's like, well, what's going on? Instead of like the whole consortium, even though that it's just, it, it's, a, it's a great segment, it's a very memorable segment, we had the Vince McMahon pulling the ear gag it just it just priceless priceless stuff instead of that what happens is Ric Flair comes out because Vince pretty much vacates the championship and he says this title will be held up and it's going to be at the Royal Rumble the winner of the Royal Rumble will be the undisputed WWE champion so that prompts Ric Flair. Ric Flair comes out and he says, it's been 10 years, 10 years since 
I've been in this company, or yeah, I'm not give or take eight years, eight years or yeah, whatever. And at the Royal Rumble, that would have been ten years since I won the 1992 Royal Rumble, where I won the WWE Championship. So it makes sense that I make my return, and not just that, but. I want to put my name in, in that hat. I want to be a part of that rumble. And I want to win that undisputed championship. So I can cap off to a great career. That is what I want. Vince is like, sure, absolutely. That makes sense. You're a big star. You're a big star, Flair. And I want this, the, this rumble to be the biggest. Rumble of all time and in a way it is because that's your main event you don't have a champion so all your main eventers are in this match and final six the final six of the Royal Rumble okay you got the returning Kurt Hennig you got Rock you got Flair you got Triple H, just came back from, from knee surgery. And you got Austin, and I will explain why Austin is in this Rumble match. Uh, because he was fired. The night after Survivor Series, he was fired by Vince. But he returns in this Rumble. And number six, Hulk Hogan. So, you got a lot of intertwining storylines going on. Triple H has been feuding with Kurt Angle because Kurt Angle wants to take away Stephanie. And he's like, he's manipulating you. He's brainwashing you and, and stuff like that. Triple H eliminates Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle gets back into the ring and he eliminates Triple H. So, you're down to five. Uh, Kurt Hennig gets eliminated. And now you're down to four. You get... You get the two face to face, the the the, the two generations face to face. You got the leaders of the '80s and Flair and Hogan, and you got the leaders of the Attitude Era, in Rock and Austin, face to face inside the Rumble, in, in this Rumble match in the ring. And I just can imagine the crowd. I believe they were in Sacramento, just going nuts, going nuts for that moment. Just these two, just locking eyes. My God. My God. So, yeah. Um, Flair gets eliminated. Then Rock gets eliminated. And then it's down to Hogan and Austin. Hogan and Austin face to face. The dream match that never was. And here's what happens. Flair... He costs Austin the match. And Hogan... Hogan wins the WWF Championship. And it's a big moment. It's a big moment. He wins. And... He holds on to the championship. Going on to WrestleMania 18. And... Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, No Way Out. We got Flair and Hogan versus Rock and Austin. A dream match for the main event of No Way Out. That's the match. That's, that's what you build the pay-per-view around. And at WrestleMania 18, Hogan versus Austin. And Hogan retains... He retains the WWE Championship by the help of the Outsiders. The Outsiders turn on Austin. Because Austin turned face. Coming back from the Rumble, you know, the, the, the fallout of the Royal Rumble, he forgot. He completely forgot about the NWO. And the, um, the NWO, ever since Survivor Series, they haven't been talked about. So WrestleMania, the Outsiders 
turn on Austin, helping out Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan turns heel. And that's your main event. Also on the card, you got Triple H and Kurt Angle. And um, you got Rock and Ric Flair on that show. So, and, and also, you have the return of the dead man, The Undertaker, who returned in the Royal Rumble match itself as the dead man, but got eliminated, and not by Maven, <laughs> no, 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 not by Maven, but by Kane. Because for the entire year, Kane has been just mowing through everybody, just destroying everybody, and going into WrestleMania 18, pretty much says to The Undertaker, you abandoned me. And they have their match at WrestleMania 18, and it's The Undertaker going over Kane. And I, I just, I don't know, I, I think that that would be a, a great match. Actually, I, I do think that it would be a great match. Because that would have been peak Undertaker and peak Kane at that time in 2002. So them having like a street fight, just a, 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 a brawl, or a false count anywhere match, where they just can go crazy. And I can just imagine like Undertaker just gives Kane the last ride onto the announcer's table and pins him one, two, three on the outside. And, you know, gets gets the number ten. And then slowly but surely, you're bringing in the the old WCW guys and the ECW guys. And by that point, I don't think like you even need to have like an invasion of WCW getting into WWE because here, here's something here's something here's here's the reason why because honestly nobody would watch WCW was great in its time and it was great for WCW fans and you cannot convert no matter how hard you try to convert the WCW fans into watching a WCW product under the WWF umbrella. Because it, it was like that. It was, it was freaking gang warfare at that time. I remember going to school and WCW fans didn't watch WWF. They knew about what was going on. But they didn't watch WWF. They just didn't like it. They were so focused on WCW. Same thing with WWF fans. They didn't care about WCW. They watched nothing but WWF. That w that's what it was back then. Sure, you had guys that that would you know that that would channel surf, you know, from Raw to to Nitro, but that was that was like. A third of the audience but the rest the two the other two-thirds they were loyal even during the dying days of WCW they were still getting that loyal two million viewers every week that they would watch WCW and as soon as WCW was bought out they went away they didn't care about WWF didn't care about the invasion. They were like, no, we don't want to watch this. We don't care about this. No matter what you do, if they want to watch, they will watch. But if not, then why bother? Why spend so much money? Why have this idea of like, WCW beats WWF, and then we're going to have Monday Nitro instead of Raw. Are you are you kidding me? Are you are you are you like, are you high? It wouldn't work. Because first off, the network wouldn't want that to happen. Second, the loyal following that you have garnered all these years that watched Raw would be like, Nitro, fuck this, I ain't watching. 
I don't care. I'm not going to watch. Because even at that time, kayfabe was kind of still alive. Where it, it wasn't as far as wrestling goes, as far as matches go, sure, that's worked. But more so in like... They believed that the WWF was the babyface and WCW was the heel. That's what fans of the WWF were. So if you have Nitro and you give Raw to, to Thursday nights, who's going to watch Raw on Thursday nights? That's, that's ludicrous. No. Nobody, n no. I, like, it, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't have worked at all. And if anything, like they would have lost way more viewers than they did at that time because they were they were just going downhill in 2001, and 2002 was like an even worse year than 2001. Um, so like I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even contemplate. I wouldn't even like entertain the idea of having a WCW invasion because I want those guys to get over. I want DDP to get over. I want Booker T to get over. Not by having them just, oh, because you're WCW, that makes you a heel. No, the last time we saw DDP was as a babyface. Last time we saw Booker T, he was a babyface. Having him join forces with the NWO? No. Because that's what I keep hearing of, like, guys who rebook, um you know, the, the invasion, they would be like, oh, I would have the NWO and they would help out WCW. No! How, why would the NWO help out the help out WCW? The whole point of the NWO's existence was to take over, not to share the spotlight. The NWO is its own thing. It's not WCW. So, you do that, you do that with the NWO, then you're done with the NWO. Right after WrestleMania 18, um, right after Survivor Series 2001, I should say, because that that you shouldn't like let that go longer than than six months, six or seven months. And right after WrestleMania 18, Hogan turns heel. Sure, you got the Outsiders. Sure, but it's only a one night thing. And the night, next night on Raw, you have them do a six man tag. And the week after that, you do the draft. You do the draft. The Outsiders are on one show. Hogan is on the other. And that's it. Boom. You're done. You're done. And and you, you bring in all these guys. And then on, on Raw, you have another storyline. You have another invasion storyline. But instead of WCW... Hey, what about ECW? I mean, like, that would work. Because guess what? ECW, when they showed up on WCW, or when they showed up on the WWF, it didn't affect their ratings negatively. It actually helped. So, if you have, like, a Taz or an RVD... You know, you got Taz, RVD, you know, Tommy Dreamer, and the Dudleys. These five guys, just these five guys, pretty much being in the main uh, storyline, being in the main event, and then feuding with, with with like your your main event star. Man, that sure, absolutely, but not just yet. Right after SummerSlam. When you have Brock Lesnar win the championship, Brock Lesnar feuds with the ECW guys. And why? Why do you do that? Because those ECW guys still are holding a grudge against Paul Heyman. Boom! Makes sense. And they beat up Paul Heyman. And Brock is beating the crap out of them. He destroys Tommy Dreamer. He destroys the Dudleys. He has a match with Taz. You know, the next big thing versus the human suplex machine. I would pay money to see that. And then finally, at Survivor Series, you have RVD versus Brock Lesnar. And then that's when you have Heyman turn and joins forces with ECW. And now you got Brock Lesnar and you got ECW. And they 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 fight for, for the next 
four months up until WrestleMania. And you do the main event of WrestleMania, one of the main events of WrestleMania, I should say, Brock Lesnar versus RVD. You're telling me that's not going to sell? People wouldn't want to watch that match? And he got all the smoke and mirrors, you got, you know, the, the, the interferences and all that, but Brock Lesnar survives at the end, and he's your, he's your, he's your hero. Boom! I've, like, I booked two different invasions, but I spread them out in two years. That's how you do it. Not in six months, not in a year. I don't do war games. No. War games, look, war games is a great, you know, thing, but at the same time, I do not trust the agents in, in, in the WWF, the producers in the WWF, to do a war games. They can't. They can't do a war games. They try, but they can't. They've had great war games matches in NXT, but it does not hold a candle to the matches that happened in WCW. Why? Because the chaos was well booked. In NXT and in WWE, they can't do that. Look at all the Rumble matches. They can't do it. It's always like one-on-one, one-on-one, one-on-one. Everybody's down. You have a one-on-one -on -one match. They can't do it. They can't book a multi-man multi match. So that is why... I just, just keep it, just keep it in the vault. It, it, it's not gonna sell. You have the chamber. That's, that's your match. You know, bring back the, do the elimination chamber at Survivor Series, and boom, that's it. You got all these guys, and you got your ECW guys, and and, you know, with the NWO. That you you've made such a big story with Austin, and the reason why I have I had Austin as part of the NWO is because I think back to when the NWO first started. It was three guys. You had Hall, Nash, and Hogan. Hogan was the biggest star in the world, the biggest wrestler in the world. So. In 2001, who was even bigger? Austin. Austin wanted to turn heel, and what better way to garner heat than to be a part of the NWO? It's, pr it's freaking badass. Them beating people up? More of that, yeah, sure. And I would believe it, it's believable. More so, then if you bring back Hogan, because guess what? You would have gotten the same reaction that you got at No Way Out 2002. When Hogan was in the ring, the fans could not stop cheering. And then you have him again. Hogan tried to pretty much murder The Rock. And by WrestleMania 18, he was still cheered. And, and he was just embraced by the fans and cheered. Why? Because the last time we saw we saw Hogan was as a babyface in WCW. So, no, and he was a returning star. He was a huge star that was returning home. How can you boo that? And that is why I would have hold off the heel turn to WrestleMania 18 because. You bring him back, huge pop, wins the WWE Championship, the, the, the roof explodes, going to No Way Out, you got the tag match, dream match, going to WrestleMania 18, dream match of dream matches, and you can even do a rematch. You can even do a rematch the following year, with the idea being... Uh, Vince McMahon is the special guest referee and you got on one side Austin you got the other side Hulk Hogan two of Vince's biggest creations in the WWE and that is Austin the Attitude Era and Hulkamania and Vince is in the middle who is he going to favor 
And, you know, that's that's just... That's my idea. And I know I went long, but this, this deserves it. It deserves the time. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. And with that being said, like, comment, and subscribe. Ding that bell icon for future episodes on the Variety Vendor channel. And as always, I'm your host of Variety Vendor. Check out my next video. We'll be talking about something else. Take care.